In this demonstration, I'm going to show the analytical capabilities of using ArcGIS 10 with some third-party software that will do a st spatial statistical analysis on foreclosure data in the metro Atlanta area. I am specifically going to look for a clustering of foreclosures in particular areas of Atlanta for the Office of the Inspector General of HUD to further investigate. Typically, we would not see foreclosures cluster in space and expect them to be randomly distributed across an area. So when we find clusters of foreclosures, those warrant further investigation. Now to do this, we need to use GIS software and some spatial analysis to try to identify those particular areas. So on the map that you see in front of you uh, is the metro Atlanta area. And if we were to show all of the foreclosures in that particular area, we would see that there's quite a bit there to analyze and would take a lot of time. However, we are also only interested in identifying clustered foreclosures in two particular counties. So rather than try to analyze all of this at once and pull out the results of that, we're going to use GIS to select out those particular areas and do analysis just on those. So if I turn these off, and I zoom in to the areas that I'm interested in, which is DeKalb and Gwinnett County of the metro Atlanta area, I can use GIS to select those out by identifying the two counties that I'm interested in and selecting out from those points to identify all the ones that I'm interested in there. So now we have a slimmed down data set that allows us to do statistical analysis on just these two counties leaving the rest for analysis at a later time. So once I've selected those out, I save them off to their own file and I use them in another analytical software called the Near Repeat Calculator. So the Near Repeat Calculator is used here to identify the clusters of foreclosures in both space and time. A near repeat is an event which occurs very close in spatial proximity and temporal proximity to another event. As we mentioned, foreclosures should not be occurring uh, in clusters, but when they occur in clusters and in short periods of time with each other, that means that there are some underlying pattern for causing that. So we're going to use this software to try to identify if there is any near repeat foreclosures going on in these two counties and further investigate that if there are. So I open up my data file that I saved out from Gwinnett and DeKalb counties and I get the data set up in two ways. I specify how far of spatial intervals I'm going to do the analysis on. So I'm going to use 660 feet for eight intervals to try to identify spatially clusters of foreclosures that occurred in eight 660 feet intervals. But I'm also going to analyze them within 30 days of occurring in those 660 foot intervals up to about six months. This way, we'll be able to see how far and how fast foreclosures are spreading in space over here and time over here. We set some statistical properties and we run the analysis. Once the near repeat calculator is finishing processing the data, it produces a set of tables that shows you the results. In that table, it shows you that there are areas that had near repeat foreclosures both in the same locations as well as in different time and space intervals. Here we see that there are a higher likelihood of near repeat foreclosures within zero to 30 days up to about 4,620 feet, just shy of a mile. But we also have a group that occurred between 91 and 120 days from about a third of a mile to a mile. We have a few that occurred in the same location between 31 and 61 days. These tell you down here are the statistic levels that they are significant at and gives us the overall indication that there are clusters of near repeat foreclosures in those two counties of DeKalb and Gwinnett. Now the near repeat calculator, while it outputs tabular results, these results do not tell you where uh, in those counties we may be seeing near repeat foreclosures. Fortunately, the near repeat calculator outputs the results into uh, observations that allow us to pull them back into ArcGIS and map them for further visual inspection and other statistical analysis. So once I exit the program, uh, the data is written out and I can load them in and thematically map them so that you can see where 
the foreclosed properties had the highest amounts of near repeats in any particular area. Off to the left, we see intervals of near repeats per foreclosure that shows you where the highest amount of near repeats occurred and where the lowest amount of near repeats occurred. Visually on the screen, we can see that the blue dots, the larger they are, the more near repeats there were uh, in, in an area, and the yellow dots represent areas where there's least. So from a purpose of investigations, we want to focus on these areas where we see a concentration of the blue dots. So if we zoom in, we can start to inspect a little closer where these are occurring and if there are any clusters of the larger near repeats in these particular areas. Some down here, some over here, but the rest of them are kind of scattered across the area. And we can also, within a GIS, sort of pan around and explore and investigate the geographic distributions visually of the near repeats looking more thoroughly at the clusters. Now from an investigative standpoint, we want to have areas for which we can oversample the loans in so that we can investigate them further as clusters. So while this, the near repeat calculator gives you these output here that we visualize just by simple graduated circles uh, of different sizes and colors, we can use those to do further spatial analysis to create a surface that allows us a sampling frame, a sampling area that allows us to say we're going to take a sample of these foreclosures in these particular areas. So if I turn that off and I turn on what's called a density surface that shows you the clustering and concentration of those near repeats based on the number of near repeats, we get a surface area that tells us and the HUD Office of the Investigations where they really need to go and oversample. So the dark gray areas here are the areas where we might want to oversample by a lot so that we can go in and systematically look at all the foreclosure loans in those areas so that we have a better understanding of what we may be looking for as commonalities across those loans. The lighter gray areas get into areas where we might need to adjust our sampling scheme back so that we don't, uh, so we get enough appropriate for the level of concentration that are in those areas. And then the areas in white, we can more randomly sample across those areas because they do not show signs of systematic near repeat foreclosure. So what this demonstration shows us is that we can use ArcGIS's capabilities for more powerful analyses by using it to process data, subselect data, export that data for more robust spatial statistical analysis, process those results in another package, bring them back in, and visualize those results for taking further actions.